Hey YouTube! Welcome to Higher Math Solutions. This video tutorial will go over how to take derivatives of functions using logarithmic differentiation. First, let's go over the derivative of a logarithm. If I want to take the derivative of a natural log of u, where u can be anything, then the rule says it's going to be the derivative of the u over u. This can come in handy because when we are dealing with logarithms or natural logs, then you can use properties to break down the function to make the calculus easier. So let's say you have this complicated function. And you want to take the derivative of this function. You could use a quotient rule with two chain rules and a product rule, but that would be a lot of calculus involved. So there is another technique called logarithmic differentiation to help us break down the function first and make the calculus easier. So the first step is you're going to make it a natural log by taking the natural log of both sides. I also went ahead and rewrote the, one, uh, the square root power as a one half. The reason that you would want to do this is because now on the right hand side we can use log properties to break down the function. So we have natural log of y equals 2. When you want to separate a quotient, then you separate the log by using a subtraction sign. And then also if you have a power, you can bring the power down to the front, as well as if you have a product, you can separate it using a plus sign. So now I have natural log of y equals to one third natural log of x plus three minus the natural log of x, and since it's a product, I'm also going to separate it with a plus sign, as well as move the one half power down. So when this is all said and done, I have the natural log of y equals to one third natural log of x plus three minus natural log of x minus one half natural log of x squared plus two because I'm, I brought the negative through the parentheses. So to break this function apart using logarithmic properties, if it's a quotient, we separated it with the plus uh, minus sign. If it's a product, we separate it with the plus sign and then any powers you have can be brought down to the front. Now you haven't done any of the calculus yet, so make sure that you don't stop here. Our next step is to actually take the derivative. You are going to use some implicit differentiation as well, because when you take the derivative of natural log of y, it will be one over y times dy over dx. And then that will equal to one third. And again, the derivative of the natural log is u prime over u. So the derivative of x plus three is one over x plus three. The derivative of one, x is 1, and it's 1 over x. And then the derivative of x squared plus 2 is 2x two over x squared plus 2. And then we want to solve for dy over dx, so I'm going to bring the y over here by multiplying. So we'll be go, going back up here. So I have dy over dx equals 2. 1 third, 1 over x plus 3, minus 1 over x, minus 1 half, 2x over x squared plus 2, times y. And then what you want to do here is you do not want to leave it with the y. You know what y is from the beginning of your problem. You will substitute that in. So dy over dx equals to 1 third, 1 over x plus 3, minus one over x, minus one half, two x over x squared plus two, times x plus three to the one third, over x times the square root of x squared plus two. There's a little bit more you can do with simplifying with common denominators, but I will leave that here. And this would represent the derivative using logarithms. That is just one option, but what it also does is it is becomes 
a, a process that we were able to find the derivative of something that looks like this. If you have something as x to an x, the power rule does not apply anymore because to use the power rule, the power has to be a constant. And in this case, you see that it is a variable. Also, the exponential rule will not work as well because for the exponential work, the base has to be a constant. And you can see that this is neither the case. You have a variable raised to a variable. So the only way to take the derivative of this function would be to use logarithmic differentiation. So again, you would take the log of both sides, in this case, the natural log, and then you would use the log properties to break it down. So on the right-hand side, I would bring the power down to the front because of the logarithmic properties. And now what I can do is I can actually do the derivative now because this is a product rule. So on this side again, I'm going to do implicit differentiation. So the derivative of natural log of y is one over y times dy over dx. This side is a product rule. So the derivative of x times natural log plus x times the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over x. And then you want to solve for dy over dx by bringing the y over to the other side. I also went ahead and simplified this part. x times 1 over x is 1. But you don't want to leave it with the y in there. Again, y was given to you at the beginning of the problem, so you're going to go back and substitute it in. So your final answer will be dy over dx equals 2 natural log of x plus 1 times x to the x. Right, let's do one more. Now let's say I have y is equal to x to the sine of x. Again, you cannot use the power rule because the power is not a constant. You can't use the exponential rule because the base is not a constant. So the only way to take the derivative of this problem will be to do logarithmic differentiation. So you take the natural log of both sides. And then you'll use the log properties to bring the power down to the front. So natural log of y equals to sine of x times natural log of x. And now it's the same process again. Now we are ready to take the derivative. The derivative of natural log of y is still the same as 1 over y times dy over dx. Again, I have a product rule here. So the derivative of sine times natural log plus sine times the derivative of natural log. We want to solve for dy over dx, so you want to multiply the y over to the other side. And then again, remember, you don't want to keep it as a y. You're going to replace it here. So instead of a y right here, it's going to be x to the sine of x. And that would represent the derivative to x sine of x. Thank you for watching Higher Math Solutions. See you next time.